Hello friends, welcome to our channel and in the practical series, uh, today we are going to uh, discuss about the practical in which we are going to find the value of h. We know h small h is uh, represented or it is symbol for the Planck's constant. So, we will find, find out the value of Planck's constant using photocell. Okay. So, in the title you might see in that a determination of h by e by using photocell. So, that actually we will find h by e and whatever may be the final answer to that we just multiplied by the electron charge that will be the h. Okay. So, uh, this may be considered as h by e, h by e by photocell or simply h by photocell. Okay. Right. So, uh, in the final step only we just have to do some uh, multiplication then you can find h or you can write the value of h by e also directly. Okay. Now, or in uh, one of the, the uh, by this particular photocell we can find the maximum velocity also v max also in the same method. Right. So, here uh, this is exclusively to find the h the value of Planck's constant. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see the circuit diagram on the screen. Uh, so, this journal you will get in the description box of this video do not worry. So, here we have a photo cell this actually this is actually a photo cell and uh, the, this is all the filter. So, we will use uh, number of filters near about 5 filters the, so that uh, only the frequency uh, of that particular color will fall on the photo cell. Okay, that is what the purpose to use the filter that means this light is already uh, uh, what we can say the uh, yellow light uh, which consists all the colors and but we do not want that we want the specifically how is the behavior of uh, the current and the voltage corresponding to the particular frequency that is why we will use red filter then green filter then yellow filter orange filter and blue filter. So, these 5 filters we will use. So, this light is there and from the in the light and the photo cell we have keep this filter that means yes that color light will only fall on the photo cell. So, yes we say we know the photo cell uh, in which we have an anode and cathode. So, obviously we know what exactly the photo cell works on. So, the photo cell works on the principle that when the light is falling on it. So, obviously it is in a reverse bias and it falls on its junction. So, uh, it will produces the current that is what the simple phenomena. So, this anode is uh, attached to the negative of this uh, voltmeter we have uh, arranged one voltmeter and the same terminal is going to the rheostat this is actually the rheostat sliding contact of that rheostat. So, we that will be fixed to the fixed terminal of rheostat and the variable terminal of rheostat will be joined to the here uh, the rheostat is here and uh, to the negative of battery this terminal is again going. So, we can see uh, indirectly uh, the anode is connected to the negative terminal of battery. So, we know that whenever anode is connected to the negative of battery of any diode then and uh, cathode is connected to the positive of the uh, battery terminal. So, obviously uh, that we can say uh, the it is a reverse biasing. So, yes photocell also works in reverse bias. So, in the photo cell uh, when it uh, the cathode goes to the uh, positive terminal of battery, but meanwhile uh, it uh, we have arranged one ballistic galvanometer also here we uh, it, it is a ballistic galvanometer and the positive of ballistic galvanometer and positive of voltmeter and the uh, one of the terminal of rheostat and this is what one way key uh, it goes to the one way key and via one way key it goes to the positive terminal of battery. So, this one way key is used only to the when we are taking readings and when we just want to stop it. So, as you remove this one way key the whole circuit will be a break we can say right. So, this is like a switch simply. Now, so what here actually we have to do uh, that we will see uh, and first of all let me show you the observation table this uh, detailed chart uh, printed chart PDF file you will get on the uh, description box of this video. So, do not worry. Now, uh, huh, what observation tables? So, we have two different observation tables here. Mm, let me tell you first one. Uh, so, very first uh, obviously the photo cell is working in reverse bias. So, all the voltages are in negative we have written. So, we have to change the voltage in this manner 0 0.05 volt, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.10, 15 and so on. So, such a small voltmeter we require. So, we generally use in laboratory the voltage of range 1 volt only. 
ok. So, all these values are below 1 Holt. So, we can use the Holt, Holt meter of range 1 Holt. Now, the scale deflection. So, this scale deflection actually you have to measure on the ballistic galvanometer. ok. Yeah, I hope you have seen already the ballistic galvanometer or otherwise we will see in the experimental part now. So, the ballistic galvanometer is a like structure we have a screen and on which we have a spot ok. So, and yes this is a scale on both the side initially it is 0 and on both hand we have the equal scale ok. So, this spot obviously because uh, the current flows the deflection takes place and this spot will vary here and there. So, initially before start the practical uh, as we have uh, as the lamp uh, of the whatever source we are using that is switched off at that time just switch on the ballistic galvanometer and see whether this spot coincides to the 0 or not. If it is not then manually you can adjust it and it uh, make it uh, exactly on the 0 that means there is no deflection we call it as null deflection. So, before starting the lamp you have to ensure that the ballistic galvanometer shows null deflection. Null deflection means 0, the spot should be on 0 ok. Now, so uh, as soon as we start the lamp, as soon as we start the lamp, switch on the lamp and what happens due to the uh, light which is incident on the photocell what happens some current will generate and that current will uh, be uh, deflect this spot and we will have some deflection in the ballistic galvanometer without starting voltage simply just after switch on the lamp once you switch on the lamp we have some deflection. So, voltage how much voltage we did not provide any voltage. So, and let us consider we have uh, first of all uh, situated the violet filter. So, voltage 0 and corresponding to 0 voltage also we have some deflection. Let us consider it is on the this right hand side. So, we will write the right hand side readings in positive way and left hand side readings in negative way. So, let us consider initially we have for the violet filter. Oh, corresponding to 0 voltage corresponding to 0 voltage let us consider we have plus 3 deflection then slowly slowly increase the voltage let me let is let, let us make it 0 0.05 volt then you will find that this spot will comes close to the 0 value that again it reading will decrease then plus 1 once it comes to the 0 also and if we further increase the voltage then it will go in reverse direction and those readings we will note down as a negative sign. Similarly, we will do for red filter and so on ok right. Once you got these then we have to draw the graph. So, we have to draw the graph in such a manner because the voltage is in reverse. So, that is why the at the middle and obviously to this side. So, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 actually it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. So, and if we plot the graph then we will find that corresponding to each color we will have some each line like this. So, this is for red, this is for blue, this is for yellow, this is for orange and let us consider this is for which of the color left ok. So, all these 5 lines you will find and each line cuts the x axis voltage axis. So, on this axis we have deflection on y axis we have deflection and on the y, x axis we have the voltage. So, every uh, curve line uh, touches the x axis voltage axis and that point we call it as stopping potential. It is known as stopping potential corresponding to that color corresponding to that frequency ok. So, then in the next observation table we have to note down that stopping potential C V f that is called stopping potential. So, let us consider for the blue filter I got this is the stopping potential. So, let write it here stopping potential. So, similarly we have to write uh, all the colors corresponding stopping potentials. Once you got the stopping potential uh, next we have to write here the next column is nu that is frequency and we know that how to find the frequency it is simply nu is equal to c by lambda uh, corresponding colors uh, wavelength will be provided to you or directly the frequency is also provided to you no worries. So, once you got the stopping potential and the frequencies then we have to plot this second graph 
in which uh, we have to take frequency on x axis and the stopping potential on y axis. And if we draw this graph, we will find that a linear curve which is basically passing through the origin and this curve if we take its a slope, so obviously it is slope and that can be written as tan theta and that is nothing but h by e. So, if you are doing the experiment to calculate h by e, then the experiment will be over here, right. But now if you want to find the h, then simply this e, you have to move to that direction. So, h is or on that side. So, h is equal to e into slope, whatever slope you got of this second graph, multiply it by e electronic charge 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19 coulomb then whatever may be the answer that will be the value of h in joule second. Finally, we have to write the result like this. Okay. So, this is what the basic method to perform this experiment and yes what exactly the photo cell and all the setup we will see in the experimental part. Okay. Right. Let us go towards the experimental part. Now friends come to the experimental part of this particular practical that is h by photo cell. So, uh, we know the final target of our C is to find the Planck's constant and we have discussed what is the process uh, in a chart discussion uh, part. Now, uh, let us talk how to actually do this particular experiment, right. Now, uh, so as we have already explained the diagram uh, and let us see how that diagram has to be implemented in real circuit. Okay. So, as you know this is battery and here we have arranged one battery of 6 volt. Then the positive terminal of this battery we know the positive terminal of battery should go to the key. Now, this is a one way key. Yes, the key has been now removed when you want to increase the voltage then only we will put it on. Okay. So, the positive terminal of battery is coming to one end of this one way key then that keys end uh, other end of the key should come uh, with three wires right. See one is going to the fixed terminal of rheostat, another is going to the positive terminal of voltmeter and another is going to the positive terminal of ballistic galvanometer. So, see here from the other end of key I have taken three wires 1, 2, 3. So, one is attached to the fixed terminal of rheostat. This is what our rheostat by which we can change the resistance and accordingly the voltage can increase and decrease. Okay. So, the one end of this particular one way key went to the fixed terminal. Now, rheostat has a two fixed terminal and this is what the variable terminal. So, one of the fixed terminal then other went to the positive of voltmeter. Now, friends, this is a voltmeter of one range. I told you we have to just vary the voltage uh, below one volt. So, that is why the total voltmeter range is 1 and yes, it, uh, it is it can be increased. Uh, you can see here 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.4, 0, 0.6 and so on. So, 0 0.8 and 1. So, that means uh, within 0 to 0 0.2 volt we have 10 lines that means the one smallest division on this volt meter uh, measures 0 0.02 volt 0 0.02 volt you can say the least count of this volt meter is 0 0.02. Now, you can say imagine uh, such a smallest uh, uh, in a such a smallest way we can increase or decrease the voltage 0 0.02 volt. Now, yes other is went to the positive term. Now, below we have positive and negative. So, we have attached to the positive of volt meter. Okay. And one more went to the ballistic galvanometers positive. Now, this terminal went to or this wire went to the positive of ballistic galvanometer. Right. Now, friends it is uh, not that much easy to show all the connections. I will try as much possible as. Okay. Now, next this end over. Now, the negative of battery directly went to the fixed terminal or fixed end of our rheostat. Now, see here the negative of this battery went to the fix. So, the fix of the rheostat, this is the fixed end. I told you 1 and 2, these are the two fix. We can say it is P and this is Q and this is what variable terminal in the, through which we can vary the resistance. Okay. Now, here it is. So, it is 0. So, the negative of battery directly went to the fix another fixed terminal we name it as q in our circuit diagram okay right now yes this uh, battery part is over now and then 
uh, we were up to this, uh, we have attached uh, another one of the terminal of the key to the positive of voltmeter. Now, let us connect uh, the negative terminal of voltmeter went to the anode of this is actually the photo cell, anode of photo cell and this is what the variable of rheostat. So, from the negative see here we have to take out the two wires. So, the negative so, from this negative I have taken only one which went to the anode here actually we have photo cell I will show you at the last ok. So, the negative of this went to the anode and from that only from the anode we have taken out one wire which is went for the variable terminal of a rheostat ok. Now, this anode part is also over. Now, just remain is that the cathode of the photo cell should connect to the negative of ballistic galvanometer and then the connections will be over. So, the cathode from cathode I have taken one wire which went to the negative of ballistic galvanometer. Now, I will remove this chart so that you can see the ballistic galvanometer and all ok. At the last I will show you uh, connections from top view so that you can we, uh, have look to the photo cell and all right. So, whenever you went to this practical after doing the connections make sure that this key is out of the this one way key plug ok. We just want no, not want to put this right now initially and the voltmeter also you can see it is in off mode that means voltage also we have to not start initially we have to take the reading of 0 volt also right and then and this uh, variable of rheostat is at the 0 make ensure that first of all and at the same time at the same time look at the spot spot of ballistic galvanometer. I told you ballistic this is what ballistic galvanometer the, uh, the spot uh, in each, uh, at the center point we have 0 reading and then uh, to the right hand side we generally take it positive and to the left hand side the readings we will take the negative in uh, sign ok. So, initially when this bulb is off now this is the lamp which we are going to fall or by using which we are going to fall light on the photo cell ok. And moreover I told you we do not want to fall the light or we do not want to illuminate the photo cell with with our yellow light because that is our uh, incandescent lamp which uh, emits yellow color frequency. So, therefore, uh, we want to attach a filters different filters in between them. So, that that color frequency only fall on the photo cell. Now, see that is what we uh, I have done here. So, these are the number of filters I, I will show you. So, this is blue color filter and likewise we have all 5 colored filters. So, uh, to the filter holder I have attached here red color filter ok. So, let me put this red color filter in between the lamp and our photo cell ok. At the end I will show you how the arrangement of the in between this and this lamp we have kept here right. So, what I am saying initially this lamp is off. So, when this lamp is off the spot of ballistic galvanometer should show you the null deflection that means, the spot should be exactly at 0 and now you can ensure that yes at the at the 0 point the spot or the ballistic galvanometer's spot shows null deflection that means what there is no flow of any current right. Now, as soon as you start the lamp I told you as soon as we start the lamp what happens that null deflection uh, changes right. Generally it moves to the positive direction let us see what happens ok. Shall I start the lamp now you just to focus on the lamp you just have your concentration on the uh, not lamp on the spot of ballistic galvanometer. Now I am starting the lamp as soon as I start the lamp the spot ballistic galvanometer spot displays from the null deflection. Yes, it has been dis displaced right. And that is what you have to note down deflection you know what is our observation table. Let me show you once again see here the scale deflection yes this is what the observation table we were talking about or initially we talked right. So, the voltage here we will note down. So, initially voltage is now 0 which filter we have attached red filter last column and the scale deflection. 
So, scale deflection is on right hand side. So, I should write the positive deflection and let me uh, see how much it is exactly. So, it is 1.25. When you look into a uh, very keen manner, you will find that the line which is ruled on the ballistic galvanometer has one division value, the smallest line. And now the spot center or the line which is on the uh, center of the spot, it is uh, just after 1 that, that we will consider 1.25 and moreover it is on the right side that is why plus 1.25 deflection okay? and yes it is in division there is no any unit and all 1.25 division. So, we have to write it, we have to write it in the red filters column in scale deflection in very first observation table. Right? Now, after note the, uh, noting the first reading, what we have to increase? We have to increase the voltage. Okay? We have to increase the voltage. Now, here I told you on this voltmeter, we have, we have uh, the smallest division value 0 0.02. So, we can increase in the order of 0 0.04 by just shifting that needle by 2 divisions. So, let me start first of all power supply. Okay? Now, the power supply has been started. And now, when we have to increase the voltage, we should put this key now, so that the circuit is now completed. And how to increase the voltage? By this rheostat variable, right. Now, let me show first of all how it is increasing. See, the voltmeter uh, deflection is there and the voltage will increase. Now, how much we have to put? We just have to put 0 0.04, that means simply two divisions not that much large it is simply 0 0.04 that means two divisions right so it is now 0 0.04 yes and the spot has been shifted towards little bit left it is now exactly 1 earlier it was 1.25 it is now 1 now see if I am increasing the voltage slowly, slowly, what happens? Now you can see, just focus on the spot of the ballistic galvanometer. It is shifting from right to the left. It is shifting from right, right to the left. Now final, we have to take the uh, 10 readings. So final reading will take 0 0.4. So now you can see, it is now on on 1, but on the left hand side. So it is minus 1. So, likewise you have to take the 10 readings from 0 volt to 0 0.4 volt, moreover negative voltage and you will understand that when you are increasing the reverse voltage, the spot is coming from positive side to negative side slowly via 0, right. This is what actually we have to do, nothing else, okay. Now it has been done for one filter, so first of all make the voltage 0, right, take out the key and see uh, this voltmeter shows zero voltage okay good and at the same time switch off the bulb after switch offing the bulb let us again ensure that this spot showed shows the null deflection if it shows null deflection okay no problem proceed for the next filter so remove the red filter now i am removing the red filter attach here any other filter that you have so, here we will attach now the blue filter. So, I am attaching blue filter, then put the blue filter in between the lamp and photo cell. Again, follow the same procedure. Now, switch on the lamp. After switch, lamp is switched on, then again the spot has been displaced from 0 position. Right? Note down this reading. Now, for the blue filter, I got plus 3. For red, it was only plus. 1.25, but now for the red, it is, it is plus 3. Again, just put the key and increase the voltage. So, now see, again focus on the, focus on the spot, ballistic galvanometer spot. As I am increasing the voltage, the spot is coming from that positive 3 to the negative side via 0. Okay, and that is what we have to note down in the order of 0 0.04 volt, right? So, this is what you have to do in this particular practical, okay, with different 
filters and then whatever whatever may be the next part that uh, we will discuss in the calculation part right now yes let me show you how is the photo cell and how is that arrangement okay so let me shift my camera view see okay uh, yes i have to switch off this lamp now this is actually the lamp by which we are uh, illuminating the photo cell and here is the filter in the holder and that thing is called the photo cell this is photo cell this is anode of photo cell this is cathode of photo cell right i hope you can see the photo cell and simply we are using this holder to have the monochromatic light on photo cell now it, the light falling on photo cell is of only blue color means blue frequency okay so friends i hope you got the uh, experimental part let us move towards the calculation part okay now come to the calculation part as i told you uh, in this uh, in this manner we will take the readings for five, five different filters so we have used here orange blue green yellow and red filters so from the zero volt so here we have just changed the voltage in order of 0.04 .04. so as we have talked as i think uh, in chart discussion uh, we in the order of 0 0.05 but no worries uh, depends on the voltmeter you have at your lab uh, you can change this particular thing so uh, 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 we have arranged such a voltmeter in which we can change the voltage in this manner uh, you can change it as possible as uh, in low order so 0 0.04 is okay so in this order we will change the hold we have changed the voltage and corresponding rate. now you you can check it initially when uh, the voltage was zero but light is switched on the uh, ballistic galometer shows the deflection in positive direction that 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 is uh, along uh, right hand side and uh, yes up to three divisions so three once you start increasing the uh, voltage what happens negative voltage more or reverse voltage so the uh, the deflection comes to the null point slowly 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 and not necessarily the zero point or the null point will occur so obviously here now see after one uh, we got 0 0.5 and once uh, after 0 0.5 uh, uh, if you further increase the reverse voltage it directly went to the minus one no problem then slowly slowly then in it will increase the deflection in negative direction same happens to the blue filter same happens to all remaining filters also initially we have deflection to the positive direction and the spot comes from positive to ne zero to negative as we increase the voltage in reverse direction okay okay now from that we have drawn this graph which is of we can say which is first graph right which is uh, on the x axis we have taken the voltages and on the y axis as i told we have taken the deflection moreover positive deflection here and negative deflection here right so below the x axis we have negative deflection right and above the x axis we have positive deflection means along y axis and here along the x axis we have voltage right now you just you can see that these lines uh, yes not necessarily all the lines will parallel to each other some lines will intersect with each other but yes all the lines should intersect to the x axis in different point and that is what happened here so this is what the, the stopping potential of this corresponding line so this line is of yellow color so all the uh, names we have given here right so this is what stopping potential of the uh, yes let me see it is of orange this is of red this is of green and finally this is of blue color so all the stopping potentials we have to note down in this second observation table so stopping potentials vf so vf all in holds holds hold hold and corresponding frequency you can find the frequency directly or uh, it it may be available everywhere corresponding to orange frequency you can get even see or if you know the lambda you can find it simply v nu is equal to c by lambda and yes all the frequencies are in hertz so you got these are the stopping potentials and these are the 
frequencies now what i said final second graph we have to draw of the frequency and the stopping potential so this is what the second graph in which we have taken uh, stopping potential on y axis vf and frequency on x axis right so the frequency and stopping potential we have taken and the slope so this is what the curve we got and the slope of this curve will be the h by e so the h by e this is what slope so we found the slope and we got h by e is equal to 0.01 into 10 to minus 13 this is what the slope so if we are finding h by e the experiment will, will be over here but if you want h then simply h is equal to e into whatever may be the slope so slope we got 0.01 into 10 raise to minus 13 right and yes let us see in final calculation we have done here so h by e is equal to the slope and or we can say the tan theta slope or tan theta and if we multiply with this e 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19 we found this is 1.60 into 10 raise to minus 34 joule second yes obviously it is not uh, as much as the standard value so what is standard value 6.60 uh, sorry 6.6 into 10 raise to minus 34 something right so it is not the magnitude is not matches exactly it is far less uh, near about 5 uh, uh, less than 5 we can say but it's okay not necessary uh, whatever uh, this this error may occur because of some uh, instrumental uh, defect or some man-made defect also we can say. So as I told you uh, when you are performing a practical so getting accurate answer is not important or getting standard answer ideal answer is not important but uh, the methodology is important and how to perform how to reach up to that particular point is important and moreover uh, how to perform the experiment how to deal with all the parameters all the instrument that is important. Okay, so whatever may be the answer you got, write it. Not necessarily you should get the standard value one. Okay, so this is what about the H by photo cell, right? Okay. So yes, friends, uh, if you feel this is value addition to your knowledge, then like this video. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends who are interested to learn the physics and the physics practicals, and yes, press the bell icon so that you will get the notifications as soon as I will post my next video, right? So let us meet in the next video with new concept, new practical. Till then keep watching, keep learning and take care. Thank you. Thank you so much.